Hi everyone, this is uh, one of my more recent uh, buys for the collection and uh, Neo Geo AES system. Um, this is the box. It's of course it's slightly rough but it's over 20 years old and I think it's in acceptable condition, some scuff marks and all that but uh, and um, the AES stands for Advanced Entertainment System also as you can see there a quantum leap forward in vi video entertainment when this came out in 1990 it was um, yeah, more or less direct ports of um, the arcade uh, games which were a lot more superior to both sound and uh, graphics. This was also a very expensive system when it came. Uh, I think it was around uh, like six, seven hundred US dollars in the US, and games were ranging from two to three hundred dollars a piece as well. So it was quite a niche market for this. Here is the back side of the box. This is Japanese edition, by the way, as you probably can see. Just show some technical info there and some screenshots and all that. And uh, here is the system itself. Quite simple design on off button, controller ports, headphone jack, uh, memory card slot, and a reset button. On the back, you have the uh, AV out and the uh, power power plug. Uh, this also outputs RBG if you have the correct cable for that. Uh, the memory card slot is for uh, save games. Another feature with this was that you could pull out the memory card and uh, bring it to the um, to the place where all the arcade cabinets were and you could actually insert that to the arcade cabinet and um, use any features in the games that you have unlocked at home or vice versa. Here is a picture of the card. Just a small piece of card. Um, and this is what the controller looks like so you can see it's fairly big and um, has a really good arcade feel to joystick start and select buttons and four buttons beside that very simple and uh, these are the games I own today um, this is Samurai Showdown or what it's called or Samurai Spirits in Japanese this is uh, I can't remember the name for it right now maybe it says in English on the back oh, I can't see it but it's a fighting game more or less 90% of the game library are fighting games. And here is Fatal Fury 2. Um, one of the funny things with uh, this system is that it's not region locked. So if you were to take a Japanese game and insert it into an American console, all the text, the language, and all that would. Um, turn to English because it's all coded inside the game every language it supports it's just a BIOS chip inside the unit that determines the region the game is set to and of course uh, the West mainly US also had you know censorship and all that so the games might also be censored uh, there are 
modified uh, BIOS chips that you can uh, change them out with that allow you to set the region so you don't have to have a system from all the regions. Those are the three AES games I own because um, they were really expensive and they still are. Many games are actually even more expensive than than when they were new. That um, as an example, uh, these three are um, MVS titles, which is um, the arcade cabinet version of this game console. And uh, yeah, for instance, Metal Slug. Uh, the AES version, the home home version, costs. I saw one on eBay for around two and a half thousand dollars. While this copy um, cost me fifty dollars because it's the arcade version. Of course, there are some exceptions, but in general, they are cheaper. Um, I'll pull out one of the games now, so you can see what they look like. Fold them up, and here is the cartridge. They have um, you know, some artwork on the front, actually, two slots underneath which connects it to the console. You know, it just inserted like so and you're done and uh, this is what an MBS cartridge looks like it's more or less the same but the pinouts are different and also the depth size of the boards or whatever are slightly different and also of course simpler labels you know the, these are not meant to be you know this displayed in the shelf at home these are meant to be inside a cabinet they just keep it simple you know and um, these games never comes in boxes like these these were supposed to come in cardboard boxes with um, I don't know if you can see but there's a serial number there and the box would have a matching serial number and also have some stuff for it to be um, put in the arcade display and all that stuff to be able to play the games on the home system you will need a converter cartridge like this one this is probably from my research by far the best cartridge when it comes to durability and compatibility the downside with this is that it costs a lot. I think it was around four hundred dollars just for this converter cartridge. While a consoleized version of the arcade cabinet can be five hundred dollars, maybe so. And of course, uh, it's expensive to buy right away. But in the long run, if you get more games for it, the system it um, might pay up a little bit. Like for instance, Metal Slug. Um, these boxes are custom made boxes by enthusiasts in the um, for the Neo Geo system. These are um, I can open it up. Custom artwork, so they display an ice on the shelf. Have the cartridge inside, and it's fit for purpose. You can also use the home cartridges inside here, but they're slightly looser fit. These cartridges are also larger than a VHS tape, by the way. And this actually looks really good. Shows the storage capacity of the game. Do you know how big it is? Some artwork on the back with some text. And. Uh, These arcade cassettes also have an orientation, as you can see the arrow on this side, and there's none on the other side. The arrow is supposed to be pointing down, and you just 
insert it in the slot here and then take it and insert it into the home system and power it on. This particular one also have a voltage switch down inside there because later revisions of the system has some slight alterations and speaking of which um, to begin with these systems output a decent AV signal, composite signal and a good RGB signal. RGB is the most preferred way to display the picture as there's no interference and it's crisp clear and all that. Later in the production run they started to try to imp improve the uh, composite video signal and uh, the quality of the RGB decreased um, and it started to get vertical lines and stuff like that on the picture. This one is actually a fairly low serial number, it's around in the 40,000s. So this one actually have a good RGB signal and no need to modify that portion of this console. I have bought a, a BIOS chip for it. Uh, I'm still waiting for a socket so I can socket, uh, solder in the socket in the system so that I can change out the chip later if there is to come an updated version of it. And uh, all in all this is a really fun system, uh, really good graphics and sounds, it's ridiculously expensive to collect for so I might get a few more games and I like to have uh, some oddities, you know, some little bit of everything so I'm probably going to pick up a couple of more games, maybe more in the future and yeah, it's really fun to play. Thank you for watching.